Hi, Sean McPherson here at Lightspeed Equipment again. I'm going to give you a little tutorial in the history of lighting up uh, exposure units for exposing screens. So when I first started in the business, we used to use a carbon arc lamp, which I don't have an example of. It was two welding rods that came together with a big reflector. It was cancerous, burning your eyes right out of your head. Uh, so they kind of went away in the end there. And what you were left with after that was tubes, UV tubes mostly. Sometimes people will even put cheap fluorescent tubes in them. Neither ones are pretty cheap. The problems with these for exposing screens is <clears throat> the light comes in, it bounces, comes out of the bulb all the way around, bounces and scatters and comes in at angles, undercuts your imaging, and gives you bad detail in your screens. The other one that we moved to from there was metal halide. Now this was for many years the top of the line state-of-the-art thing that we used for exposing screen printing screens. Typically they'd have a shutter, although some of them were instant start, and they all would read how much light was coming out through a sensor of the bulb so that your exposure times could be measured in light units instead of seconds. Very good detail very good wide spectrum of, of UV light, plus a lot of other light elements coming out of it. So if anybody has an old five-way unit, it'll have one of these quartz bulbs in the bottom, which has almost no UV in it, produces a ton of heat, and does almost nothing for exposing screens. They were built by National and uh, one other company, and they'd have two of these on the side. So not only were they blasting a lot of lumens at a ton of different angles, but it was take forever to burn a screen, like five minutes for a photopolymer emulsion, and the detail was horrible. Here is our light speed bulb. So when we developed light speed, which started in 08, the first problem we ran into with using LEDs was one color LED because the nanometer range is so narrow will not do a proper job of exposing screens. Polymers works okay, but if you need to do any other kind of screens, your dual cures, your water resistant emulsions, this is the only way to properly cure that because there's two different nanometer LEDs in each lamp. The other problem was focus. So uh, LEDs, when raw LEDs have a 120 degree spread, which makes them a little bit better than this tube, but not by much. Uh, so, we have these custom lenses made for our unit that takes that 60 degrees and brings it down to, LEDs go inside the cone, cone shapes it up and brings it down to a 60 degree angle. That's how we keep our detail. LEDs, not only do you have the normal savings in electrical usage uh, that you would over other bulbs, but the problems with these bulbs, all of them, are that we're powering up a whole lot of other light spectrums in there that aren't really doing us any good. Now that we've gotten down to the pure LEDs, the pure nanometer light waves that we need to properly expose a screen, this is it. It's the only way to do it. I've got three patents on this process here and uh, lots of good, happy customers.